Hi guys and welcome back to another Scooby Doo tier list. It's going to be a quick one today because I'm covering the 13 ghosts of Scooby Doo. Once again I've skipped over a few of the scrappy shows which I'm not as familiar with and I've landed on a show which I do know more about. Obviously this is going to be a shorter video, there's only 13 ghosts. In fact there wasn't even 13 really because this show was infamous for not actually capturing the 13th ghost. But if you include these two, I kind of made the numbers up. I've only got three tiers here to keep it simple, trash, meh and good. I think that's more than sufficient to rank these monsters. Right so the first episode was to all the ghouls I have loved before and Bogle and Weird were introduced in that episode but there was no main villain really. I'm not counting the werewolves which were the townspeople and Daphne of course. So let's just rank these two for now. I can't really call them trash because they do have some lasting appeal I guess. But I just don't find them particularly entertaining. The first appearance was their best by a long shot. I like how they tricked Scooby and Shaggy into opening the chest with that fake game show fiasco. But in all the episodes they appear in after that, I find they actually take away from the more interesting villains and kind of hog the screen time a little bit so they get pushed back a bit for that. The villain of the second episode was Maldor the Malevolent. He was supposed to be a master of black magic and he actually did demonstrate various spells. He could grow himself to gigantic sizes, cast a sleep spell on Daphne for example. So he did bring quite a lot to the table in that regard. I can't say he's that memorable but I think he's better than average so I'm going to pull him in good. Whenever the gang encounters a villain which actually poses a real threat to them, it's always enough to get my attention. Next up is Queen Morbidia and she's going in trash I'm afraid. She never stuck out to me at all, meant to be this kind of woman vampire. But the episode she was in was quite boring I think. She tries to be like at this typical arrogant villain who thinks a lot of herself. But she's a bit dumb. I mean the ending of the episode, she didn't even look properly for the chest of demons. She didn't even check her own bedchamber. I can't give her too much credit can I really. Next up is the Reflector Spectre. And he was kind of meh I think. He was fine but could have been better I think. The premise of him was interesting, the fact that he comes out of mirrors and stuff like that. But I think he was a bit underutilised in the episode. They could have done more with him is basically what I'm saying. Next up is Zomba and she's godly. Probably the best villain in the series. The episode she's in is entertaining. The way it's all shot as this motion picture. Her power to send people into these movies is a powerful power indeed and she puts it to good use. Her design is also quite flashy with her red skin and all that kind of stuff. She also seems to be able to teleport herself around in the episode. She's not the smartest ghost in the world because the gang do trick her in the end but she's still left an impression so she's definitely good or godly for this show. The next episode technically doesn't have a ghost, it's a ship of ghouls episode. I'm not a massive fan of that episode anyway. And Captain Ferguson is apparently not officially one of the 13 ghosts. And all the ghosts in that episode were just random ghosts I suppose. So he doesn't appear on this list. Nakara however certainly does. And she's another good monster. She is a witch or a demon whatever you want to call her. But she obviously has a beautiful appearance. And is able to entrance warlocks under the spell of love. Which of course works on Vincent van Gogh. And the big kicker is that if she manages to kiss the warlock, she can steal the powers for herself. So yeah, she was actually smart unlike most of these monsters. She did trick the gang and almost succeeded in nicking Vincent van Gogh's powers. So yes, a unique gimmick and a fun little episode. Next up is Marcella and she's the epitome of meh for me. Mm, actually thinking about it, she might even be trash because that witch episode, she turns up at like the last minute and is foiled quite easily. I do like her design and the episode is okay. I like how it finishes at Stonehenge with the gang all doing the silly dance. But the screen time is kind of mainly stolen by the three incompetent witches. They're like the three stooges of witches. I mean they're okay but they take up too much time and their act gets a bit old. And as I say, as a main villain, this supposedly all powerful witch simply doesn't get enough screen time. So although I like her design, another missed opportunity I'm afraid. Next up is Time Slime. And despite breaking the rules by opening the chest of demons himself, he's still a good monster. 
he does one of the more impactful things, probably in the whole franchise, where he basically makes everyone his slave, and Shaggy goes crazy at the loss of Scooby-Doo. It's quite an impactful episode, and his time manipulation power is certainly one of the most powerful in the series. So yeah, definitely a good one. Next up is Demondo. Good again. These type of monsters is when 13 Ghosts is at its best, when they have like a unique power that the episode explores in great detail. The power of this monster was that he was able to put people into comic strips. It's a similar power to Zombas of course, but the episode felt unique and certainly different enough to stand out. I love Platypus Stark in that episode, and in general he has quite a um, Grinch-like appearance, so that's enough to get a few brownie points I think. Next up we have... Rancor. And I don't actually remember much about him, so that alone says a lot. He definitely has some powers. I think he's able to possess people or something like that, but it falls flat for me. Again, he should be a lot better than he is. His design is decent, but sadly nothing else about him is really. The villain of the penultimate episode was Professor Phantasmo, who was the circus leader who tries to trick people and hypnotize people, so he was more brain than brawn. This by the way is just his humanoid form. He does have a monster form, which he reveals at the end of the episode. He does actually achieve a lot, doesn't he? He managed to briefly hypnotize Flim Flam, so he almost got his way. He's definitely top end of average for me. He wasn't as iconic as these, and his powers weren't as cool as these, but he was still decent, he got the job done. And finally we have Zimbulu, I think is his name, from Horoscope Scoob. I mean he's your typical kind of beast man demon in terms of appearance, quite physically intimidating. He's quite ferocious in the episode as well. He certainly intimidates Bogle and Weird, although I guess that's not particularly hard to do. So yeah, I think he was either bottom of good or top of meh. I'll put him in good. Eventually he was foiled by Flim Flam and his Vaca Spook 2000, and like the rest of the ghosts, sealed in a chest of demons. So yeah, that's it. As I said, the show was left on a bit of a cliffhanger, and that was the last we saw of the series. The less said about the curse of the 13th ghost, the better. So yeah, I hope all you Scooby-Doo fans enjoyed this little bit of content. I'll probably do one more of these. I definitely want to do What's New Scooby-Doo before I'm done. But let me know about the 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Do you like the show? Do you dislike it? A lot of people give the show a hard time, and I understand why, it's a bit too silly for its own good at times, but I like how experimental it is, and the fact that it has so many good monsters, with cool powers, unique powers, and the fact that the episodes themselves were so unique, and experimental, makes me respect the show, even if it's not like the best thing ever, so this was definitely a tier list I wanted to do. But yeah guys, stick around on the channel, there is more content coming, so subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you in a bit. Take care.